So YouTube, team, keep it clean. What's going on? It's Engraven here with another video. Before we get into this video, because we got a lot to talk about with Dante Demons Jr., because I've seen a lot of Ravens fans super excited that the Ravens got him, um, I got to give a special shout out to y'all, uh, because y'all have supported the channel like crazy. Y'all have just been wild with it. Like, I appreciate it a lot. I love y'all so much. I, I thank you for appreciating everything that is put into this channel. Um, so thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you for every like. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for commenting. Thank you for sharing the, the channel with your friends, your family, all that. I appreciate it. Uh, shout out to my guy Nitro. We had a lot of fun recording at Lamar Jackson's restaurant the other day. Uh, I appreciate y'all sharing a lot of love on that video because that was a real special one, man. Because stuff like that just, it don't happen. Um, but before we start talking about Dante Demons Jr., uh, I wanted to say, especially in regards to that, we ain't done yet. We ain't done yet. We got more, bigger, and better to come on the way real, real soon. So, like I told you yesterday, make sure you subscribe. Turn your notifications on because I don't want you to miss it. I don't want you to miss anything. But I certainly don't want you to miss what's coming. I love y'all. Now, um, after the draft, the Ravens, they were active. They, they went crazy with it. I think, what, they signed like 19 undrafted free agents, something like that. I forgot how many it was, but I know it was a lot because I, I wasn't even done recapping the draft yet, and they only had six picks. They only made six picks, but then they started going crazy with all these undrafted free agents, and I'm like, man, Ravens, slow down, chill out. I'm trying to get you up, buddy. Hold on, buddy. But they, they wouldn't. They, they, they didn't care what I had to say. They didn't care what I thought either. But one guy, one player who I saw so many Ravens fans super, super excited for was Dante Demas Jr. Like, they really, like really, really hyped that the Ravens had signed Dante Demas Jr. So I'm looking around, seeing everybody. Oh, man, this guy last year, uh, he was supposed to be a day one pick, but he came back for, for another year. Everybody say, oh, man, there's a lot of people even saying that, oh, they feel like he could make the 53-man roster, too. I said, whoa, that's some high praise. So, you know what? Let me see for myself. L -l -l Let me see what all the, the hype was about. So, I looked up Dante Demons Jr. I see he was born and is from D.C. So, I'm like, oh, okay. So, he's close. He's in the area. And then he went to, he played for Maryland. And I'm like, man, so he, he, get, he got to stay home in college? Oh, that, that is just, that's great. But then, now he signed by the Baltimore Ravens as an undrafted free agent, as an undrafted rookie free agent. So it's like, man, this dude is just living the dream. Well, that's if he does want to stay in Maryland or the D.C. area. Well, but he, uh, he, he's home. He, he's home, and it's like it, it makes it easier to transition and all that because you ain't got to move all your stuff. You ain't got to move all your belongings, even though I'm sure he would be willing to do that. But it makes everything just a, a smooth process. So shout out to him, man. Um, so what I did, uh, I, I looked up the numbers. Looked up the numbers. He is 6'3", so taller guy, taller wide receiver, uh, about 217. Um, but looking at his stats, because I saw in 2018, um, I know that, that was a, uh, a tough year for him, because I, I did read that his father died in, I believe, a car accident. Um, so that's, that's got to be tough, especially him knowing his father. Um, cause when somebody's father is in their life, cause I didn't have my father in my life. I just met him for like the first time, maybe like eight years ago. And it was like a first and last time type of thing. Uh, but anyway, um, for somebody whose father is in their life, that's gotta be tough. That's gotta be tough losing him. Uh, especially when you got a relationship with him. I mean, losing anybody who you got a relationship with, but for a boy, um, with his father, especially getting ready to go to college, getting ready to make that transition from high school to college. And then that, that, it's, just, it's just tough. Regardless of what the scenario is, it's tough. So I'm sure that was a, uh, a lot for him. Uh, but he, he pushed through. So that, that, that shows a lot of uh, mental fortitude. That shows a lot of toughness, mental toughness as well. So shout out to him for that. Um, but looking at his numbers, in 2018, uh, which was his freshman year uh, with Maryland, he played in seven games, had 13 receptions for 278 yards. So uh, when you look at that average, uh, it was 21.4 yards per catch. So that's a lot of big plays. Uh, well, not a lot because it was just 13 catches. But when he caught the ball, 
it was for big yards. Whether it was a big catch that he brought down uh, and it was already well past the first down or it was a catch that he went and got yak for. Um, that average speaks for itself. So then the following year, in 2019, this was his year right here because he caught 41 catches for 625 yards and six touchdowns. That was his year right there. That, 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 that was the one right there. So had an amazing year. Um, while the average went down, the average yards per catch uh, by about six yards, uh, the, the receptions went up. So it's harder to keep the average really high, especially if you get a lot more catches. So I don't see an issue with that. But then the touchdowns went up by 600% because he didn't have any touchdowns his freshman year, but then sophomore year he had six touchdowns. So, yeah, it, it increased significantly, obviously. Then in 2020, um, he just played in five games. He had 24 receptions, 365 yards. Uh, but his average remained the exact same. And this was uh, an efficient year for him because 2019, he had uh, 625 yards, six touchdowns. But 2020, he had 365 yards, four touchdowns. And that average of 15.2 yards per catch, it remained the exact same. But then 2021, his senior year, he only played in five games and this year as well. In 2020, he played in five games. 2021, he played in five games. But uh, in 2021, he was on a good pace. He was at a good pace, but then he got hurt. And then he missed what I think was the last seven games of the season. So that really messed everything up because he had 28 catches for 507 yards. So he was, he was on pace to get a stack. He was on pace to get a stack. He was on pace to get 1,000 yards, but injuries just derailed everything. And that just sucks. That is the absolute worst. Um, and it's, it's unfortunate. But he aver his average was high, too. See, he was, getting, he was getting catches, getting yards, and he averaged 18.1 yards per catch. So it was up there. And he, and he had three touchdowns as well before he went down with injury. Uh, and then last season, uh, he did play in 12 games. He had 22 receptions for 233 yards. The average went down. Uh, the touchdowns went down. He had... Um, is he averaged 10.6 yards per catch and only had one touchdown. Uh, but he did also, he, he, he said that um, he, he was still hurt. He, he was still dealing with uh, the injury um, from, from the year before. So that had a big impact on his game. It had a big impact on his production because when you're not all there, you're not all there. And you could try, you could try to push through and I get it. I respect it. I, I admire it. And maybe he felt like, you know what? Ah, I got hurt last year. I don't want to go out like that. I, I, I want to go out bigger and better. But the, the injury was still bothering him. So he couldn't live up to his previous performance and the, uh, the trend, how his previous performance was trending before he got hurt uh, in 2021. So that's why the, when I saw the numbers and, and, and fig, f found out the backstory, I was like, oh, okay. That's why a lot of Ravens fans saying that he's a steal. But I said, you know what? That's not enough for me. That's not enough. I need to see the actual film. So we did that. And we watched him and we saw that um, he got that stride. He, he, he got the stride. Um, he, he got good speed. Uh, he's 6'3". So, you know, his speed is going to look different than somebody who's smaller. It's going to look different than their speed. Because like we always say, with them taller receivers, it's like whoosh, 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 whoosh. With them smaller receivers, like da 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 But um, he, he got good stride. His route running is smooth. It's smooth. I don't think it's crisp, but it's smooth. And what I mean when I say that, um, crisp would be like cutting on a dime, sharp turns, and da 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 da. But he's 6'3, so I don't think we should realistically even expect, like, uh, like maybe somebody like 5'10, their route running might be like quick. But somebody who's 6'3, you, you got more body to take care of. So I don't expect you to be cutting like that. But it, the route running was still good, in my opinion. Um, him, my favorite thing about him that I saw, him high pointing the ball. That was my favorite thing about him. When they threw that jump ball, whether it was uh, to his little brother or whoever the quarterback, when they threw that jump ball, he would go and get it. He'd go and get it if it's coming his way, of course. Uh, he is not afraid of contact over the middle. And that's big because that allows your team to do more with you. And that allows you to do more as a receiver. Because there's some people that, hey, you come across the middle, you hit that like, man, oh, he got linebackers and safeties there. Oh, no, I'm not going there, buddy. You can forget about it. But he was not afraid to go across the middle. So that's a good thing. 
Um, and yeah, he he catches the ball with his hands. He catches the ball smooth and effortlessly. It, it looks good because there's some people when they catch the ball, it could be awkward. They could be doing all this. They could be doing all this crazy stuff when they catch the ball. But him, you just nope, I got it. And he had good body control too. Um, I forgot which game I was watching from him. And he caught a pass, and he sort of got nothing. He was close to the sidelines, but he maintained the body control to stay upright, to get his balance, and, and keep running down the sideline and getting more yak. And we know how important that yak is. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we'll see. We'll see. Now, when, when you think about what he could do on this roster, he is up against a lot, a lot. So it, it for him to make the roster, it would take, like, a, a better than amazing offseason because the Ravens have five potential locks pretty much five as of right now. I know stuff could change, but they have five locks as of right now on the team at wide receiver. That is Odell Beckham Jr. Rashad Bateman, uh, Zay Flowers, Devin DuVernay, Nelson Aguilar. Those will be the five locks. Uh, the other two positions are up for grabs in my opinion, that being James Prochet and Tylen Wallace. So those are the active roster guys. So right now, they are technically seven active roster guys on the team. But again, only five guys who are expected to be locks. Um, so that would leave one, probably one wide receiver spot up for grabs. I don't think they're keeping seven wide receivers on the roster. Even though the, the offense is going to be changing, but I still don't anticipate them keeping seven wide receivers on the roster. So basically for that six wide receiver spot, um, Special teams. Special teams is going to be key. Uh, if, if he can play special teams, great. If he hasn't played special teams before, he'll have to learn it. And, you know, like, hop on him. They, they definitely they definitely going to be willing to teach you. Like, hey, they, uh, you know how they, 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 they get down with special teams. But that will be his best chance of making it uh, on the active roster. And, again, he, like, offseason – OTAs, minicamp, he obviously had to show up to all of that, especially being an undrafted free agent, so it's going to be harder just to make the team. But he would really have to show out. Preseason and all that, he's going to have to show out. But that's where he could really make his mark, preseason. Because, you know, like the starters and stuff, they ain't going to get much playing time. But the undrafted free agents and stuff, oh, yeah, that's, that's when you, you can go shine, go do your thing. So um, you think about the practice squad. Think about the practice squad. Uh, right now, you got guys like Shamar Bridges. Cause it'll be tough because he, he got a year of experience under his belt. You got Andy Isabella. He got years of experience on active rosters under his belt. And, of course, it, things could change with guys who are on or off the, I mean, excuse me, on or off the practice squad. But, basically, he, he is up against so much. So, I can't come up here and say, oh, yeah, I expect him to make the active roster. I mean, if, not, if, he, if he made it, hey, then it would definitely be well-deserved because that means he really worked for it and outshined a lot of other people. And to go from undrafted rookie free agent and make the Ravens active roster as a receiver, ooh, especially everything that's in front of him, especially even the guys that's on practice squad that's in front of him, that would, that would mean he had an amazing or better than amazing offseason. So, we'll see. We'll see. Anything's possible till it ain't possible no more. So I'm sure that he will uh, just work, just grind, just go for it, get after it. Because the potential's there. It's just a matter of maximizing it, capitalizing on it, uh, showing it. And then we'll see what the Ravens do, what decisions they make. So anyway, team, keep it clean. I appreciate y'all. I love y'all. And we out.